All right, so we're back into Buried. We just finished chapter one. We've gone in the bunker and this this bunkery thing, and it doesn't feel right, but we just finished that, so we end chapter one. Well, this has just gotten started. That was a, a 30 minutes worth of playing, um, like 30 minute episodes, roughly, and respect the dead. You and 36 players left Tony's body where you found it. Oh, I'm an asshole. You and 76% of players were upfront with Dennis about Tony's death. You and 55% told Dennis you believed his story. You and 75% of players wanted to investigate the ringing sound. You and 64% of players decided to bring Dennis with you. Alright, so other than leaving Tony's body where I found it, I basically was with the majority of players. So I don't know if that makes me a good person or a terrible person, but I guess we'll find out. Begin chapter 2. Holy shit, this place is big. Is that a railroad track? This is definitely Area 51. We're standing on the thin platform of what looks like a fancy subway. The rails look well used, but not old. There are small overhead lights that are very dim, as if they're running on emergency power. The dim overhead lights are a blessing, but the size of the place makes you feel invulnerable. Staring ahead, the tunnel seems to be endless. It's almost dizzying. There's a small light further ahead, and then the space that breaks the monotony of the tunnel's curved surface. Another platform, maybe? Why are we in a subway tunnel? What do you think this is? Why are we in a subway tunnel? Dennis doesn't answer. The reality of what we are seeing is sinking in. Whatever this place is, it is buried way underground. It seems impossible to be making anything that's on the other side of this tunnel dangerous as far as I'm concerned. But of course we're going to go on. Human curiosity is going to see to that. Also, the ringing noise is louder down here. It's much more solid now, and there's some other sound. Something like the faint hum of machinery. What's your take on this, boss? You think we're safe here? Dennis asks. Not at all. This is what I think to myself. But I don't want to let Dennis see that I'm worried, that I'm rattled. While he seems to be limping along much better than when we first stumbled into this place, he's still in rough shape. I'm leading him here, and I should probably make him feel confident, confident in that. Yeah, we'll be fine. We'll be totally fine. I reassured De It's totally good. We're in this weird-ass giant bunker, but dude, listen to me. Trust me, bro. It, it, just trust me. We're going to be completely fine. Promise. If, I promise. If something bad happens, it's just a prank, bro. It's just a prank. All right? We're not punked. We're too far in to go back. No, you're not. That, don't give him that horse shit, I say. Besides, if we get caught for trespassing, I'm pretty sure we'd slide by. We're good. That's what you're worried about? You're in pain. We've got to find the rest of our crew. They could still be here somewhere. Dennis nods looks reassured, albeit weak and miserable. From the looks of it, we can go either left or right. The left is slightly lit, the right not so much. This makes me uneasy because I have the sense that one wrong turn in this place would likely have us wandering for hours. Something I drink my hand to the right as I hear the unmistakable sound of someone walking. Did you hear something? I asked Dennis, my eyes straining to see anything in the darkness. Not sure. Maybe. Kinda sounded like footsteps. I waited a moment, but the sound doesn't come again. So those are our options. The left are frickling lights indicating that we'll at least be able to see. There's also a hum of machinery, a sign of life. To the right is just darkness. We also heard footsteps in that direction. Let's not go right. Let's go towards the big machine with lights. Let's be smart. Yeah. Oh wait, never go into the light. No! No! You're not supposed to go into the light. That's death. Oh my god, I'm an idiot. Oh no, don't walk into the light. No, fuck, I'm sorry, no. No, we're probably walking into hell. Uh, uh. As we head left, the lights ahead are like a beacon in the dark, luring us forward. Don't do it, don't go into the light. I'm sorry, I made the wrong choice. I just killed him. So we'll let the lights on for us, no. I wonder if that's a good or a bad thing. As we near the lights, I hear the hum of machinery grow louder, but it doesn't sound like any machine I've heard before. As the light increases, I used to take a, an inventory of Dennis's condition. While the bleeding seems to have stopped, the amount that is soaked into his pants and shirt is beyond alarming. How much further can you walk, I ask him. Can you keep going? Yes, let's walk into the deep tunnel that has no business being here. Now fully stepping into the light, I notice that the sound of the machinery is coming from an area on the left side that is protected by a guard rail. Wisps of bright blue light dance on the walls as they leak out from whatever is below. I also notice a post sign that says danger, severe radiation poisoning threat. Step closer and look, stay back and move on. 
Are we gonna fall off the freaking guardrail if I look at this thing? I wanna know! I wanna know, but I feel like if we stay, if we die. Uh, I'm curious to see what, if you guys have played this game or you know this game or decided to play it, let me know what decisions you make because, gosh, I'm so, I don't know. R radiation poisoning is usually a bad thing, but I kind of want to know what's going on. I already walked him into the light, so. Well, let's, let's move on. I don't, I, I feel like we're going to fall over the guardrail. I don't think we should get whatever, whatever is down there, I say. Dennis tw studies the blue light a bit longer and then nods. He's hurting enough as it is. I don't think we need to add radiation poisoning to his list of ailments. Or mine, for that matter. We step away and take off down the tunnel again. As I start walking, I notice another structure coming into view up ahead. Okay. This looks like a hazmat area. It looks like an underground... It look This has to be Area 51. It, like that, I'm getting all kinds of secret government base vibes. As we head further in the tunnel, we reach another platform. There's light coming from the platform, but it, like the overhead lights, they are dim red emergency lights. I started wondering if the explosion at the logging site caused a power outage in this place, whatever this place is. The ringing noise I originally thought was in my head is getting louder. I'm starting to think it's some sort of alarm. When we come to the large open area ahead of the tunnel, it further resembles a subway station. I must have tried to ignore the reality, it's undeniable. We've stumbled into some sort of high-tech transportation system that is buried beneath the forests of Kentucky. It makes absolutely no sense and creates an entirely new sort of fear as to what the hell we've walked into. I notice that Dennis seems confident, though. We reach the large opening, we have to climb over the rails and up onto the platform. I have to help Dennis over the rails and then up the small utility ladder that is bolted to the opposite side of the travel way. When he reaches the large open area resembling a subway waiting area, he collapses on the floor and lets out a heavy breath. A heaving breath. You know what? This is ridiculous. I quit. I'm not going any further. On top of worrying about my crew and the madness of whatever wherever we are, I'm not in the mood for Dennis to act like a baby. What the fuck, man? Where are you gonna go? I'm not gonna be a dick. It's okay, you can do this. You can... I'm not the one with the gash on my side thinking myself, so I decided to cut him some slack. Yeah, I don't want to piss him off. Damn, boss. I'm sorry, he says. It's okay. I don't know how you're still on your feet, if I'm being honest. Stubbornness, he says with a weak laugh. You need a minute to rest, I ask, as warmly as I can muster. No, if I sit down to rest, I'm afraid I might not get back up. Let's keep going while I can still go. What if the blood isn't his and he's faking it? No, I'm not going to go that far. I don't think it's that big of a thing. I'm, not, I'm a conspiracy theorist, but not like that. And not like a crazy conspiracy theorist. Like, I'm talking about in games. We reach down, help his feet, and we get ourselves out on the platform. Right in front of us, there's an entrance to a long hallway exiting the platform area. It's at this point that I realize those red emergency lights might be on for someone else who is actually supposed to be here. Uh, I'm staying quiet. I don't, I'm not, I don't want to yell out. I'm still not sure if I want to alert anyone to the fact that there are strangers in this secret place. Yeah. And the thought of hearing a scream, even my own scream in this empty place, is too much to bear. Smart. Emergency lights continue to flick overhead, casting a sick sort of pinkish light on everything. And we know someone's here. We heard footsteps. My mind is racing with what sort of place this could be. It's obvious that it's meant to be secret. And if it is supposed to be secret, and there was a power outage recently, maybe most everyone is evacuated. This thought does nothing to make me feel any better as we walk towards the platform exit. We step inside, and it seems just as empty as every other place we've come to. Weakly illuminated by more overhead emergency lights. We're standing inside a hallway that looks surreal for a moment. I, it's very creepy. I'm I, like I have to say I have to give this game a lot of credit. I'm feeling some goosebumps at certain points, and I'm feeling overall creeped out by what's going on in here. Mostly because I have no clue what's going on. We're going from being loggers to like Area 51 demons shit. The hallway reminds me of a hospital wing, but there's something not quite right about it. It's the first clean and tight area I've seen since coming into the woods. It looks like it was recently in use despite the dim emergency lights overhead. There are chairs against the walls and the floors look well clean, as are the walls. Uh, the ringing noise is definitely coming from here and a small flashing red light comes from the ceiling along with it. That ringing noise is an alarm. But for what? Dennis asks. And of course, that's the big question. What the hell is this place? We exchange a look that speaks volumes. We reach the end of the hallway and hear a sound like a large metallic grinding. This is followed by the clicky noise, and then the unmistakable noise of a generator kicking on. 
He waited all that time to turn on. Why am I more creeped out with the lights on than off? Without warning, the facility jolts to life. The red glow of the emergency lights is suddenly replaced by bright white fluorescent ones. The mechanical hum is oddly comforting. Somehow the power being back on urges us on. It's then when I noticed the ringing noise has stopped. So it had been an alarm. But for what? Just the power failure? We head down the hallway, the electric hum of the lights sounding eerie overhead. Other than that, the place is dead quiet. The hall is about 100 feet long with two main doors. One door opens onto a large room that looks like a conference room with a whiteboard and paper strewn about. Across the hallway, another door looks like a laboratory of some sort. Dennis slumps against the wall in defeat and lets out a scary sounding chuckle. Something funny? I ask and a dark and brooding panic starts to grip me. Dennis just keeps chuckling as he slides down to the floor. I'm just going to sit here while you look around, he says. There's a look in his eyes that reminds me too mar far too much of a dead animal on the side of the road. Enter the conference room or the lab. Let's go for the lab. That might explain some science -y shit. Oh yeah. Looks like uh, some evil human experiments are going on in here. Hmm? You, uh, you testing on uh, lumberjacks, huh? Well, you can play it that way, man. Me and my 41-year-old bearded kick-ass self are going to beat some shit up. Okay? We talk tough. Walking inside, I see small vials and glass containers held in a clear glass case. Everything is glass or silver, and I feel like I'm dirtying the place up. I notice several test tubes and glass cases, while some sort of tube system that seems to have clear fluid trapped inside of it. In the back corner, I find a laptop and screensaver removed. I doubt I know much about science, like I like this guy knows, so I'm going to look at the laptop. Let's get the information about what they're testing. I hit the enter key, and a plain gray black lounge, black, black lounge. Background pops up. There's several icons and folders to choose from. I click on the folder labeled Test 1.5 Ethos. A few documents are filled with formulas and names I mostly don't understand. There are some things that are easy to understand, things that make my blood go cold. Summer subject number six, cause of death, embolism or aneurysm or both. Ideas for new delivery mode. Spherical liquid, induced comatose stay first. Terracor Co equals possible plutonium supplier. We're gonna look at the test tubes. I can't help but check out the test tubes. They're all filled with varying green and light blue fluids. One of them looks to have some sort of glowing dirt resting at the bottom of it. Another holds what looks like a grasshopper submerged in liquid, only it's the strangest grasshopper I've ever seen. At first it looks like it's expanding and contracting like a blowfish, then it contracts so much that it vanishes completely? As I look closer, it springs back into existence in a completely different test tube and I'm embarrassed when I actually jump back. I'm taking another look around the lab, trying to piece together what might have been taking place here. Are they trying to teleport shit? I smell some sort of a chemical in the air. It makes me think that someone has used this lab recently. Outside in the hallway, I heard Dennis grunting. I had another room to see him still seated on the floor. I don't get very far because as I exit, a man comes rushing around the corner with an automatic rifle in his hand. Holy shit! Don't kill us. Please don't kill us. Please don't kill us. Please don't kill us. Please, please don't shoot us. We're unarmed. Young, messy with dark hair. Is it Joe? He's getting so pale that I wonder if he even, if maybe he lives down here as the look of a guy has been cooped up for a little too long. He doesn't seem like the kind of person I trust with a gun in a stressful situation. Shit. Is he a, a subject? As he uses us in the doorway, he screams and brings the gun up. It's aimed directly at my head. Um, I, how am I going to try to attack the guy with an assault rifle that I'm nowhere near? I, shit, dude, don't shoot me. I'm just a fucking lumberjack. Yeah, bro, I... If the maniac pulls the trigger... Nah, you'll die, bro. Who are you and how did you get here, he asked harshly. Before he can answer, he continues speaking. I didn't recognize if, if you... If you're here, you would have had to sneak by the security mics in the entrance hall. What? I ask, unable to think of anything else to say. Who are you? Did you do this? Shit, f maybe I did. The man eyes us both as he something his eyes and sells me. He's scared, but there's something else. We're just loggers. His eyes look distant for a minute, and then he says, Bullshit. Look at us! Are we wearing, like, fucking, I don't know, fucking flannels or some shit? But for some reason, I'm pretty sure he knows he's telling the truth. 
Someone knocked the power out, he says. It's back on now, but if it's out long enough, well, we're in a heap of trouble. Was it you? Who said you? Holy shit, dude. Look, we don't know what you're talking about. Something happened out in the woods. Are you alone? Are there others with you, the man? The armed man asked, thrusting his gun in my face. How the hell did you get in this situation? I think to myself. If only I left that damn ringing noise alone, we wouldn't be here. I'm not really sure if I want to give this guy any information yet. We don't know anything about him. Then again, he might have answers. I'm going to tell him we're looking for our crew. We, some bad shit happened. We have other crew members that we can't find. Your crew, he asked, seeming confused. This man thinks that we're nuts. There's no telling what he might do. The fact that he looks a little crazy himself makes the decision even hairier. But how did you get in here, the man asks. I pointed down the hall towards the subway. We came in that way. The doors weren't locked. This expression calms a bit. I'm still very aware of the gun that's leveled less than a foot away from my face. Please put the gun down. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna try to grab it. Please put the gun down. Please put it down. The only way I'm putting this rifle down is after I've blown your brains out. With that, he uses the muddle of the gun to flip my hard hat onto the floor. It's a childish move, a playground tactic at best, but sufficient to show me that he knows that he's in control now. He then levels the rifle with Dennis, and I can only assume it's because his wounds make him appear to be the weaker of us. The man takes a shaky step forward. Dennis looks back and forth between the barrel of the gun and me, his eyes pleading for help. Fuck it, we gotta do something. You step between the gun and Dennis. Before I'm fully aware of what I'm doing, I step out in front of Dennis. The barrel of the rifle is nearly touching my chest now. Well, Dennis and the man seem a little confused with my action, I do best to swallow down my fear. I'm ballsy. I don't know what's going on here, but we are here by mistake. We might have no business here, but now that the power is on, I think you might be too late anyway. For what? For what? He doesn't answer me. He says his forward and actually pushes me backwards with the end of his rifle. I'm so fucking dead. The man then repeats a question that he asked before, one that makes no sense and honestly makes me think he might be a little crazy. Who sent you? You assholes from the Pentagon? I'm not quite sure how to take this question. Is this guy joking? Yeah, I'm the president. How about we not? Yeah, I'm the president. I don't want to be... I feel like this dude could shoot the shit out of me. But if I just make the... I'm like, yeah, I'm, no, I'm... Uh, yeah, no, I don't know what the fuck you're, I'm talking about. Yeah, we're just looking for our crew members, buddy! Jeez, what? Just put the gun down. Calm down, dude. Don't we look like loggers? Turn you over. There's no need for that, I tell him. I have no guarantee that he won't pull the trigger. Look, we don't want any trouble. We're just gonna, as confused as you are. Then in a moment so fast, I was just about to miss it. Dennis lunges forward. I have no idea how he's moving so fast. Just 30 seconds ago, I was worried about how close to death he looked. But now he's lightning fast. His left arm coming down the barrel of the gun like a club. I maybe was, I told you I thought he was faking it. In the commotion, he does pull the trigger. The booming noise is deafening, and there is a moment where I think I've been hit. Dennis is dead, isn't he? He takes the clanging noise of the round tearing in the floor at my feet to help me realize I have not been shot. I look to the floor to see where the shot missed my right leg by less than three inches. Jesus. I'm paralyzed. In shock for a moment as Dennis and the man fight over possession of the rifle. There's a fire extinguisher over the walk uses a bludgeon, but I might not have enough time to grab it before Dennis is overpowered. Punch his ass. I don't want Dennis to get killed. He has the man pinned to the floor, but isn't strong enough to keep him down. As I follow the floor to help, the barrel of the rifle swings right in front of my face, a reminder of how close I am to come to being shot. On my knees now deliver a hard, stiff punch to the man's face. I don't punch often, never really, but I'm not usually the brawling type. Oh, come on, don't tell me it's a bitch-ass punch. It's apparently effective. His head snaps back hard and his grip on the gun loosens. He grabs the gun and falls to the floor, clearly winded and in pain. Our attacker is immobilized. I can feel a shift in the situation. Yet, although he is basically harmless, now I feel the need to pummel him. A desire that builds each second. I look at him. No, we don't need to beat the shit out of him. You take it easy on the man. 
He's definitely out now, no threat, or at least that's what I think. But he surprises me by mustering up one more swift kick in my direction, connecting with my fucking hell. My eyelid swells the size of a grape almost immediately. Seems like this last attack is more to spite me than to defend myself. Himself. My stung will back and ready for another round of blows, but he just slashes the floor. He's done. Dennis instantly hands the rifle over to me, and I take it with shaking hands. I can't believe you stepped between me and that gun. He could have killed you. I got you, bro. Right here. Day one, Dennis. I was pretty sure he wouldn't. Still, thanks, man. That was some heroic stuff. You would have done the same, right? He says nothing as his eyes look to the floor. What do we do now, boss? We come this far and I want answers. I sense that Dennis does too. I walk over, pick up my heart out the floor. After placing it on my head, I turn towards the man. We get answers from this guy. No answers, the man says. I don't have any. Next time, I won't just hit you, I said, plunging the rifle towards him. Now get up. Ooh. He obeys quickly, but his legs are wobbly and he leans against the wall for support. I can feel my swollen eyelid from where he kicked me earlier. I just hope it doesn't get so bad that it affects my sight. Of course it will. Okay, let's move, I say, pointing the gun further down the hallway. We come this far and not going to let this guy stop us. We walk down the hallway until we come to an end. A single elevator waits for us. It's steel sliding doors larger than a normal elevator. Continue. We're not even into chapter- we're on chapter two! We're not even anywhere near the end of this game. This is crazy. Before I get him in the elevator with this guy, I think it's wise to learn a bit more about him. I can tell it's making him comfortable for me to have the gun. Well, no shit. Whoever has the gun is... What's your name? Marcus. And you work here? This girl doesn't want to answer, but he gives us a little nod. We're looking for the rest of our crew. Any idea where they might be? No, he says curly, not bothering to elaborate. There's got to be something useful we can get out of this guy. I just need to know how to dig for it. If I... I need a first aid kit for my friend here, I say. Where might I find one? Down on the second floor, he says, but we can't go down there. What's on level two? He looks at me like I'm an idiot. You must be aware you're inside of a classified government facility, he says. It makes sense, but I, I want to doubt it. Well, I'm sure our government would want you to help save my friend. So tell, take me to the first aid kit. I can't. You don't have clearance. Hell, I barely have clearance. Then, seemingly to himself, he mutters, I make this place run. And not, even, and not even a thank you. Just a bunch of restricted access rooms. I'm only allowed to go in with a friggin' chaperone. I interrupt his monologue. We're going to that first aid kit. I could lose my job, he says. I wonder for a moment what sort of trouble I could get him in for hitting a government employee. So he's glad I took it easy on him. And again, he had come at us with a rifle. It makes me think that things have gone terribly wrong in this place. And the explosion in the woods or whatever the hell had happened might be linked to it all. I need to convince him to take us to the second floor, but I'm not sure if it would be more productive to threaten him or ask for sympathy. Well, he hates the government. He hates the people he works for. Look, it hasn't been the best day. We're just trying to find what's going on, to find our crew, to survive. I know that this has a, is an enormous situation down here, but it looks like all your protocols have been blown to hell. Can't you help us out? He looks at me sternly, weighing his options. Okay, he says. Thank you. With an untrusting stare, Marcus walks the elevator door, approaching a small keypad by the doors. He punches in the numerical code on the keypad, and we can hear a slight mechanical hum behind the steel doors. After a few seconds of angry glances and frightened sneers from Marcus, the elevator arrives. The steel door slides open with a whisper revealing the interior. We gotta be getting close to chapter 2. We're 24 minutes in, roughly. To this one. And I'll cut it off at 30 minutes or chapter. I'll cut it at the end of chapter 2. It's exceptionally well lit and looks to be made of stainless steel. I have expected the thing to take off at the speed of light. There's another small keypad on the front right panel by the door with the options for three sub-level floors. Looks like this elevator doesn't go to the surface. So after we get a first aid kit for Dennis, how do we get out of here, I ask? We can't leave. Once the power had come back on, the whole place was put on lockdown. What? Can't you override it? No, it's to prevent anything from getting out. I can't. It looks as deflated as Dennis. We can't get out. We're stuck here. Dennis leans in the corner almost falls onto the floor. The struggle for the rifle took a lot out of him. I can see that much on his face. Slowly we start to move down. The hum and grind of the car's motors fill the space. I'm glad we brought Dennis. What can you do, you jackwagon? Marcus bristles at the question, but I think it's fair. 
I mean, he's not allowed to unlock the doors or even get medical supplies. Why keep a guy around that can't even grab a band-aid without permission? Without me, nothing would get done here. These people think they're so brilliant, but some of them can barely turn their computers on without help. The top coder in my class at MIT, and I'm stuck living underground helping idiots who don't even trust me with keys. What goes on here? You may as well shoot me, I can't tell you. Why not? It's beyond classified, and the things I know don't even cover the start of it. What does that mean? I asked, starting to get irritated. It means that even if I wanted to tell you what sort of work is done here, I don't know enough about it. What's your job? He's a mechanic, I think. I handle the IT work and make sure the databases are up and running. It's a 24-7 job. I haven't seen the sunlight in almost a year. I wonder what staying in a place like this for that long would do to someone's mind. Uh, make them go nuts and run at you with a rifle? I was recruited. Because of the workload. No one else wants this job, but I don't really mind being by myself. No family. Plus the IT, it's some crazy shit. Crazy how. This place generates over 100 terabytes of data per day. He gets in a little excited before his face falls. We'll knock the lights out. Seems like some sort of power outage. That's all I know. There was an outage and then... And then what? Then things got weird. Things got bad. Bad how? The whole place seemed to shake when the lights went out. I was checking the monitors when it happened and everything went dead. EMP? It took no more than a minute or so before I started hearing the screams. People were were being killed by something. I tried getting the security cameras back up again, but they only lasted for a little bit on my backup systems. But what I saw? What? I'm feeling a sharp fear worm its way into my guts. But what I saw on the screens for a little bit of time made no sense. It made me get the gun from the emergency vault. I think whatever it is is still down here. Hold on. There's an emergency vault with a rifle in the same room as the security cameras in this place? He gives a grin and looks nearly insane. There are guns locked away in every room in this place, just in case, you know? So we're still in danger here? As he opens his mouth to answer, the elevator comes to a stop and the door slides open. Marcus is out right away without a word. He makes his exit and heads directly for a glassed-in room that is filled with computer monitors and high-end equipment. Dennis and I file out right behind him, trying to keep up. As we do, one very alarming question runs through my head. What the hell kind of government facility keeps loaded guns in, every, in emergency vaults in every single room? End of chapter 2. Ooh. This is getting really, really good, guys, because we're two chapters in. And we still have no clue what's going on. None at all. We're in a government facility. There's a, we're, we're moving down the levels to even more classified stuff. We're on level 2. Who knows how many levels there are. And there's some sort of accident that happened. And and it killed a bunch of people. And we're just a bunch of loggers. We're a bunch of badass freaking loggers, dude. Alright. Alright, let's end chapter 2. And then see what what we picked. And then I'll start chapter three in the next episode. I'm gonna I might do this thing all the way through. Curiosity. You and thirty nine percent of players obeyed the warning sign and stayed away from the glow. Yeah, I didn't want to get fucked up by whatever that is. You and sixty four percent of players stepped in front of Dennis to protect him from Marcus. Mercy. You and sixty five percent of players were easy on Marcus after he surrendered. Begin chapter three. All right, so I'm going to end this episode here. We're going to start chapter three. I'm basically playing these all the way through. I kind of maybe want to stop and wait and, like, get some advice from you guys. But I guess it's, like, the first time I want to go through just have it my own experience and see how this goes because um, I don't know if I'm making good decisions or bad decisions. It seems like for the most part I've made decisions that a lot of players made. It doesn't necessarily seem that that's the right path to take. Um, but maybe it is. Uh, it's interesting. We're getting deeper into the bunker, so at least we survived this long. And we have two more, three more chapters to go. So uh, I'm gonna end this one here. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a comment down below. A like if you enjoyed it, or and a, a comment for anything. Basically, if there got a game you want to play, if you have some suggestions, maybe tell me about your experience with this game, or if it seems interesting to you. I love feedback more than anything. Um, and if you want to share it with your friends, if it was good, I'd very much appreciate it. So, and uh, we will get going with chapter three in the next one. So peace out, everybody, and I'll see you real soon. <laughs>